the TPS 51 120 the TPS 51 120 so this is the 3 volt 5 volt IC so this IC as you see U6 is the 3 volt 5 volt power management IC this IC with this two MOSFETs generate the 5 volt and also this IC with this two MOSFET generates in the other side 3 volts okay so as you can see here in the motherboard okay this is this IC the TP is 51120 is this exactly is this as you can see we have here the TPS 51120. So this is the 3 volt, 5 volt IC. And here, as you see, we have the coils. As you see, the 3 volt and 5 volt coils with capacitor, its capacitor, and also MOSFETs. Okay, we have here two MOSFETs, and here we have two MOSFETs. Two MOSFETs for, with this coil to generate 3 volt and two MOSFETs with this coil and with this capacitor to generate 5 volts okay the same as we have here so we have here the IC okay we have here two MOSFETs as you can see we have here one coil as you can see and we have here the chemical capacitor the filtering capacitor and here we will get 5 volts okay so as you can see here the MOSFET, we have some pins here that we should know in this MOSFET, okay? So, here we have, this is enable 5 volts, but this enable 5 volt is not connected. Also, enable 3 volt is not connected in this IC. The power go to also is not connected. We have here the power or the enable 2, okay? We have the V boost 2 we have the drive high and drive low this drive high and drive low is controlled these two mosfets in order to generate 3 volts as you can see we have here the control signal so here this is the high mosfet and the lower mosfet so drive high signal will control as you can see the gate of this MOSFET and for the drive low as you can see or here the drive low 2 is controlled the gate of this MOSFET and then we have here a coil as you can see okay and then we have here capacitor as you can see with 320 microfarads and here and 5 volt of course and here we have a pad this pad this is like a test point where you can check the presence of 3 volt or not and here we have the 3 volt okay the same working principle for the 5 volt as you can see here so here in this side also we have here the drive high one that controls as you can see the drive high one as you can see controls this MOSFET as you see in its gate okay and of course here we have the V bath always the V bath we have here 19 volts okay this 19 volt will pass through these capacitors this is a ceramic capacitors or chemical or PF capacitors this is its references in the motherboard C1046 and C1047. Okay, then the 19 volt will pass through this MOSFET when it is activated by this control signal, the drive high. Okay, and also for this MOSFET, we have in its gate the drive low, as you see, drive low 1 will control this MOSFET and of course always the second or, or the lower MOSFET is connected to the ground why always we find the second MOSFET connected to the ground in order to protect the IC or the circuit okay because if there is a high voltage 
this IC will be opened and then the, the additional voltage will pass through this MOSFET to the ground. Okay, and here, of course, we have a coil as you can see here L3, and then we have here a chemical capacitor as you see C21. Okay, it's reference and also another ceramic capacitor C22. And then we have a pad here. You can check in this pad. You will find this pad as you see power pad in the motherboard to check the presence of 5 volt or not. I will show you this pad. As you can see here in the motherboard, always you will find next, as you see, always next to this capacitor chemical capacitor always the pad is connected to the chemical capacitor and to the coil as you can see here in the motherboard i will show you here many pads as you can see so here we have a pad here as you can see here this is pad kind of pad near to this coil we have here another pad this is the pad too so near to the 3 volt as you can see here do you see here we have 3 volt after the coil and the capacitor the chemical capacitor we have the pad here you can check the presence of 3 volt or not as you can see here okay so this is the coil the 3 volt coil and this capacitor and this is the pad okay so as you see we have here coil and chemical capacitors and also PF capacitors and we have the pad as you see we have coil chemical capacitor and PF capacitor and here we have the pad here you should check if whether the 3 volt is present or not okay the same for 5 volts okay so here we have another IC this IC will generate 1.5 volt. Okay, this volt. This is the voltage for chipsets. Okay, and here in the other side will generate 1.8 volt. This voltage is for the RAM, random access memory, and for the graphical. Okay, so the reference of this IC is. TPS 51124 and in the motherboard U9. Okay, so I will show you this IC in the motherboard. So, as you can see here, okay, this is U9. This IC, as you can see, with exactly about one, two, three, four, five, with five pins in each side or six pin as you can see here we have six pin also here six pin as you can see the same as here we have from one to six also from here also we have six pin six pin six pin means 24 pins as you can see here okay so here we have the tps 51124 so let's check let's check the ic let's check it as you can see 21 okay as you can see 51124 we have tps 51124 okay the same reference as this ic okay so also this ic has the same working principle we have ic okay we have here two mosfets always we will find two mosfets always the first mosfet or the higher mosfet is connected to the 19 volt or plus v battery okay and here we have a coil the same working principle then the chemical capacitor or the, f the filtering capacitor its reference in the motherboard in the motherboard is c1089 with the capacity of 220 microfarads 
and 2.5 volt and here we have a chemical or a ceramic capacitor c71 and here we have the pad pad 3 then we will get 1.5 volt so let's check in the motherboard this two mosfets this coil this chemical capacitor the ceramic capacitor the pad 3 okay so let's check all these components in the motherboard i will show you all these components for so for this mosfet we have a q19 okay and q1024 okay so here as you can see we have q1024 as you can see here okay and in the other side we will find q19 this is q19 okay so here we have q19 this mosfet is q19 as you can see okay the coil is l5 as you can see here near to this mosfet as you can see near to the q19 we have l5 okay this is l5 as you can see here we have here l5 as you can see and we have q19 for the this capacitor okay c1089 so let's see the other side okay as you can see here so this is the capacitor as you can see c c1089 as you can see 1089 this is it this is a chemical capacitor so now let's see this c71 so let's check the other side so here if you focus so if you focus here we have c71 but this PF capacitor is not connected here okay do you use just a chemical capacitor no problem so now let's check this part 3 okay so let's check it where we can find 1.5 volt so let's check it in the motherboard so as you can see here near to the coil to l5 coil we have here as you can see pad 3 this is the pad if you check this pad 3 you will find here 1.5 volts okay so now we check the parts of 1.5 volt if we go and i read i want to add that we have here the drive high as you can see for this mosfet the control signal for the higher mosfet and we have the drive now for this mosfet so for example if you have if you get if you use the multimeter and you check this mosfet the drain of this mosfet as you see this is the drain and these three pins are source one two three are source and the pin number four connected to the drive high so this is the gate for this mosfet okay by the way always the pin number one two and three is the source the pin number four always is the gate and the other three pins i mean five six seven eight is drain okay so if you want to troubleshoot for example if you don't get here 1.5 volt what should you troubleshoot easy the problem can be in this capacitor if this capacitor is bad okay you will not get 1.5 volt if for example this capacitor capacitor is shorted to the ground you will need you will not get 5 volt here the 1.5 volt will goes in this direction to the ground then you will not get 1.5 volt okay or even this capacitor the chemical capacitor if you if it is bad also it will be shorted to the ground so you should check this this and also you should check the coil for example if 1.5 volt okay is generated here but the coil is cut is bad when the coil is bad the coil is exactly like a fuse when it is bad 
it will not let the current to pass so you should check this coil how can you check this coil using the multimeter so you should put the multimeter to the continuity option and then check this coil just put the black probe here and the red probe here of the multimeter if you hear a buzzer or you see a low resistance in the multimeter then the coil is good if not then the coil is bad then you can check the MOSFETs okay. let's assume for example that you find here 19 volts you check using the multimeter and you find over here in the drain 19 volt is present here but you still don't you still not get here 1.5 volt so maybe this MOSFET is not activated so maybe this MOSFET is not activated so you should check its gate as you see because the control signal is sent by this IC the power management IC U9 so this IC controls these two MOSFETs okay if the drive high is absent here this MOSFET will be closed okay so when you have 19 volt here you should check the power or the voltage in the pin number 4 the gate normally you can find about 6 volts 8 volts or around that okay or even you can find 3 volt or 1.5 volt in accordance with the type of ic and the type of the mosfet okay if you find for example here that the the control signal is present here and the 1.5 volt is still absent here okay then you should check this MOSFET maybe this MOSFET is damaged if this MOSFET is connected or shorted to the ground the voltage that passed through this MOSFET will pass through those, this MOSFET also and will go to the ground okay so you should check the serviceability of this MOSFET so how can you check the MOSFET using the multimeter easy you can just put one probe here and the other probe here if you hear a, a buzzer or you get a continuity means this MOSFET is shorted you should not get a continuity for example here this is a PMP MOSFET why because the direction of this diode is from source to drain so if you put the red probe here as you see because this is the anode of this diode and the black probe here in the drain you should get a reading in the multimeter about 600 or 500 okay means the MOSFET is good the same for this MOSFET okay so when you check all this so maybe you have a problem in the IC so how, how can we check the serviceability of the ICs by checking the PF capacitors next to ICs as you can see here the PF capacitor is connected to the ground in one, in one terminal and the other terminal is connected to the IC okay so if you check for example this PF capacitor this or this and you find it shorted okay you find a short or you find a continuity between its terminals means the IC is connected directly to the ground means the IC is shorted okay you can also use your finger and check the heat of the IC if you feel that the heat of the IC is increased is very hot means the IC probably should be replaced by the another one of course with the same reference as you can see okay so here as you can see to generate 1.8 volt here we have the same components always we have two MOSFETs as you can see and we have a coil as you can see here we have a chemical capacitor as you can see with the same capacity and same voltage okay here we have plus means this is 
chemical or polarized capacitor and here this is a normal capacitor or a, a ceramic capacitor here we have open because this capacitor means doesn't install it in the motherboard as we have seen before that's why we have open here okay open means will find you will find the place of this capacitor is in the motherboard is empty okay as you can see here here as you can see we have c71 as you see open imp means no capacitor normally this is a ceramic capacitor exactly like this one normally should be here like this one exactly should be here but this is open c71 okay as you can see here we have here c71 we have open means the capacitor is not installed no problem they just use the chemical capacitor okay this is also for filtering okay so the same working principle for the 1.8 volts so let's check the second page so in the second page as you can see we have this ic u20 okay this is a small ic its reference is tps 51117 okay so this ic has has as a purpose what to generate the vccp so this voltage is a necessary voltage for the chips for three chips the cpu the gmch and the ich okay i will show you this ic's in another page okay so as you can see we have here plus vccp powered the ich the cpu central processing unit and the gmch or the north bridge so this power is necessary for these three chips this power is equal about 1.05 volts okay so the value of this power is about okay equal to 1.05 volt okay so to generate this power we need a power management ic we need also two mosfets and one coil and we need a chemical capacitor and a ceramic capacitor this is the main or the important component in every circuit the power management ic mosfets coil or inductor chemical capacitor for a filtering and of course we have here some resistance as you see always you will find this resistance this is this resistance is used for protection for stabilization to make the ic work in a good conditions okay so for protection and to stabilize the power management ic okay so as you can see here for this power management ic as you can see we have here some good signals we have here as you see this ic has seven pins in one side in one side and other seven pins into other side so this is a gl ic okay so we have seven here and seven here and as you can see here we have also the drive high for this mosfet as you can see q27 and here this is the control signal the drive low for this mosfet okay so always we have our main power the 19 volt the v, the, the v battery okay means 19 volt here and of course we have this inductor l23 okay and we have this capacitor with about the same value as the previous capacitor 220 microfarad okay and here 
we have this part part six here we can check whether the vccp that is equal to 1.05 volt is present here or not okay so here in this page we have another ic a big ic okay this is the bigger ic in every motherboard of course a power management ic so this is u1018 this is a cpu power management okay this is its reference always the max it770 or the maximum it770 8770 is the CPU power management IC, okay? So I will show you this IC in the motherboard. So as you can see here, so we have here U1018, U1018, as you can see, the same reference as here. We have here U1018. Okay, U1018. Okay, so this is a max as you can see here in the schematic. We have max 8770. So let's check. Let's check the IC. So, as, as you see. We have max 87, 70, okay? Max 87, 70, okay? So this is the CPU power management IC. So for this IC, as you can see here, always for the CPU, we have one channel or more. So this is the first channel here okay and here we have the second channel so i will show you the whole schematic or the whole circuit so as you can see here okay so this is the power management ic okay and here we have two channels this is the first channel we will get finally vcc call and this is the second channel that will work to get the same voltage plus vcc core okay so this is the master or the first channel and this is the slave channel the same working principle always we have the power management ic we have the lower mosfet that is connected to plus v battery okay 19 volt okay so when this 19 volt is present here we have here the gates the control signal for this gate will comes from here as you see we have here drive high one okay drive low one and we have the lower mosfets we have here two mosfets as you can see so here we have a coil l19 and we will get here the vcc car okay for the second channel, the same working principle. We have here three voltages. We have coil and we will get plus VCC core for the CPU. So let's see the pin configuration of the power management IC for the CPU. So as you can see here, we have the VCC core. So plus VCC for the CPU is always 19 volt okay so here this is a very important signal as you see we have here seven signal or seven ids as you can see here this is ids vid zero means voltage id zero one two through six means seven ids so what is the purpose of this ids this ids is the tanks that determine the value of vcc core so each cpu has its own or its special ids for example let's assume that we have a cpu 
Intel CPU. The working power for the Intel CPU, for example, is 1 volt. So the VCC core, for example, for Intel CPU is 1 volt. But for AMD processor, it needs 1.2 volt. So the power management IC can now the requirements of any CPU based on this ID. So for every CPU, it has its special IDs. Okay, because the power of CPUs is not the same. There are CPUs that can be powered with 0.8 volts, others with 0.9 volts, others with 1.1, others with 1.2, etc. So this ID is the, the signals that determine the value or the required voltage or required VCCP core for each CPU. Okay? So for the CPU, as we have seen here, this is the first channel, and here we have here the second channel. So for the CPU, generally, you will find two channels or more. Every CPU has two channels or more. You know what? Because the CPU is always in work, so it needs always the power so if it has just one channel the component of this channel can damage it easily so to release the head of the processor and its components that compose its channels the manufacturer use many channels for the CPU about two channels or more if the first channel work, the second channel is in rest, stop working. And if the second channel work, the first channel stop working, and vice versa. Okay. So here we have a very important circuit. I like this circuit. You know why? Here we have this IC, this small IC, U10. Okay, this is a TPS 51100. Okay, so as you know, for the RAM, always RAM or random access memory needs two kinds of power the main power and the power for RAM terminals. Okay, so this is we have in this schematic or in this motherboard the RAM is ddr2 and as you know the main power or the working voltage for ddr2 is 1.8 i will show you so as you see here we have here the motherboard here this is a ddr2 okay do you see here the power we have here 1.8 volt okay this is 1.8 volt because this is ddr2 exactly as we have here like the schematic we have here 1.8 volt so 1.8 volt is the working power for the ram but the ram also needs another power for its terminals i will show you its terminals as you can see here here this is terminals as you can see this this is terminals okay this is RAM terminals. So this RAM terminals needs 0.9 volts. Why 0.9 volt? The half of the main power. The half of this power is 0.9 volt. So to generate this 0.9 volt, we know we need an IC or a power management IC to generate this power. So this IC with reference TP is TPS 51100 is the IC that is responsible for generating this power. It takes 1.8 volt, as you can see, in these two pins. So we have here V in, the 
main power or the working power for this IC is not 19 volt. No, because this is just a small IC. The, we have here 5 volt, as you see. The 5 volt is the V in, is the working power for this IC. Okay? And then we have here 1.8 volt. This 1.8 volt, as you can see, is the input, as you can see. We have here the VDD. Okay? So the 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 input 1.8 volt will be the input for this IC then we will get the VTT as you see the voltage for terminals as you see VTT we will get 0.9 volt for another motherboard with for example DDR3 its main power is not 1.8 volt no its power is 1.5 volts I will show you a motherboard with DDR3 random access memory. So as you can see here, this is a motherboard with a DDR3 memory. As you can see here, we have 1.5 volt and also here we have 1.5 volt. Okay, so this is the main power. But for terminals, we need the half of this power, means 0 0.75 volt. So, in the schematic of that motherboard, we need here 1.5 volt, and in order to get here 0.75 volt. Okay, so this is the working principle for the random access memory power. Always the RAM needs two powers: the main power and the VTT or the power for ten minutes terminals always the vtt is the half of the main power okay and always so the power for ddr1 the main power for ddr1 is 2.5 volt and the power for ddr2 as we have seen in this schematic is 1.8 volt and for ddr3 the, the main power is 1.5 volts and its VTT should be 0.75 volt. Okay, the half of 1.5 volt. And for DDR4, the main power is 1.2 volts and its VTT power is 0.6 volt. And for DDR5, the main power is 1.1 volt means its VTT should be 0.55 volts. Okay?